the last thing we need to verify is that the projection matrix actually does what we claim that it does. Or maybe a better way to say it is that we need to verify that the normal equations, uh, when they have a solution, and they have a solution whenever A transpose A is invertible, and A transpose A is invertible as long as the columns of A are linearly independent, we just need to verify that under those circumstances, the X that we get from the normal equations corresponds to the projection of B onto the subspace S. And so the last thing for you to do today with your group is to take a stab at a proof of that theorem. I call it the orthogonal projection theorem or the projection matrix theorem. And that theorem reads as follows. If we go back to our screen for a moment here. The theorem says that when X is a solution of the normal equations, then AX is the orthogonal projection of B onto S. Remember, the normal equations were the equations that uh, we use to build a definition for the projection matrix. But the normal equations are A transpose AX equals A transpose B. And so your job is to take a stab at proving that if this is true, then AX is the orthogonal projection. And the hint is, all you need to do is verify the orthogonality of AX to B minus AX. And just to quickly sketch a diagram of what that looks like. If again, here is my vector space, here's my subspace S. And then I have a vector B, which is outside of the space. Here's B. Then when we set up the normal equations, remember what we end up doing is pulling back to a vector space of a different dimension. In this example, two dimensions, because our matrix A has uh, two columns and three rows. And we end up with a vector which is actually back here, x, which solves the normal equations. A transpose AX is equal to A transpose B. And then once we find that x, applying A to x gives us an element back in my subspace, AX. And what you're verifying is that the line connecting AX to B is perpendicular to the subspace S. And the hint is uh, that in order to do that, it suffices to show that the vector AX itself, so that's the vector that points from the origin out to AX, we can show, or you can show, that that vector is perpendicular to the vector pointing from AX to B. The vector pointing from AX to B, you'll remember from vector calculus, to get a vector pointing from one point to another point, you simply subtract those points. So this vector is B minus AX. This vector is AX. And if you can show that those vectors are orthogonal, then you have completed this proof. All right, so let's see what we've got. Uh, for your proof of theorem 19. Theorem 19 s claims, it asserts, that the orthogonal projection of B onto S, where S is a subspace, um, will have the property that B minus AX, the vector uh, joining B to AX, will be perpendicular to the subspace S. So here is what Jamie has said so far. Um, so Jamie says, if you take the normal equations and you subtract from both sides A transpose AX. So I'm going to come in here and minus A transpose AX from both sides. Then what we end up with, she says, is 0. That's the right-hand side of what I have. It's the left-hand side of what she has. Is A transpose B minus A transpose AX. Great. And then, she says, factor out, which we can do with matrix multiplication, factor out the A transpose from 
this equation, we end up with A transpose times B minus AX. Okay, great. So now my question is, I, I agree completely with everything Jamie has said. Um, so my question is, how does this prove the statement? So we have this equation, 0 is equal to A transpose times B minus AX. What is that actually telling us about this diagram? Just to give you a, a gentle hint, this zero over here is actually the zero vector. So what is that telling me? I'll take another 30 seconds to, to think about it and then I'll give away the farm. So there's a tempting conclusion to make from this um, that's just been suggested, um, but it doesn't quite hold up. So we know that orthogonality, that two vectors are orthogonal, V is orthogonal to W um, as vectors uh, when V transpose W is equal to zero. So that's our definition of what it means for two vectors to be orthogonal. The problem is that up here in our equation, one of these things is a vector, b minus ax. This is a vector. But the other thing is not a vector. A here is a matrix. So all we have to do to complete the thought, I just want to add a couple of, uh, of words to the sentence that was just contributed here for your proof. And the couple of words are the following. That when I multiply a transpose times b minus ax, I get the zero vector. But all of the entries in that zero vector, zero, zero, dot, dot, down to zero, this first zero, for example, is going to be the dot product, or it's going to be the transpose, rather, of the first column of A, let's call it A1 transpose, with B minus AX. And same thing with the second entry. This is going to be the second column transpose B minus AX, and so on and so forth, down to the last column, AN transpose B minus AX. So in other words, when you multiply a transpose by a vector, what you're really doing is taking each column of A and taking its transpose and multiplying that by B minus AX. So the import of this equation here is not that A is orthogonal to B minus AX, but rather that every column of A, because orthogonality is a property that vectors have with one another, not matrices. But because of the way that matrices multiply, we conclude here that every column of A is orthogonal to B minus AX. And if that's the case, then because S, the subspace, is exactly the column space of A, that proves our theorem. And so that's that, and that's where we'll wrap this up for today.